we can stay on track. Because you know me, I'm, I'm a stickler for schedules. I'm a stickler for a lot of things. So, oh, Lex just messaged me. Oh, uh, don't worry, I've got it figured out. Uh, okay, if you're interested in giving me recap, I'm feeling quite thankful for you all being here. You could earn a point of DM inspiration for everyone by giving the recap. But if you want to give it yourself, give me a recap roll into chat. Please and thank you. Got a 13? Lucky number 13. Let's see, I'm out. I'm out of inspirations, so I gotta Boop. throw that. All right. All right, well, it looks like Lotus has won it with a mighty 13. Uh, please, Lotus, take over. Absolutely. All right. So we picked up last session in the middle of our uh, multi stage boss fight with the hag. Uh, I was still being uh, crushed to death in her mighty bosom. Uh, it was a rough battle, not just for me, but for everyone. And initially, uh, did place a curse on me, which not only uh, which not only brought me to zero HP and rendered me unconscious, it put me in this uh, weird unconscious state where uh, I where. If we did not find a cure for the curse before the end of the day, I would have to roll a con save, or I would permanently die. <laughs> uh, the battle went on pretty well, and ev even with me uh, in my unconscious state, uh, everyone fought very valiantly. Uh, while I was unconscious, I was flashing back to when I was on the Mind Flare ship and all the horrible things they were doing to me. Uh, Flavy tried to uh, calm me down by playing smooth jazz music, which didn't really help. Uh, our imp friend had been following us around, apparently found a way to get in there, and offered me a deal that for a few years of service that uh, they would lift the curse. I said, no thank you. Uh, eventually, uh, as the fight worn down, the Hag started getting desperate and bargaining with the rest of the party. Uh, they weren't having any of it. Uh, they did end up killing her. And eventually, Alicia used uh, the scroll of Greater Restoration that they had and used that to get rid of the curse that I had on me. So thankfully, that worked out pretty well. Uh, we re reunited with the B team. The, uh, the wolf, who we had encountered before, uh, expressed their gratitude to us for getting rid of the hag, so now they can uh, settle in here. And let's see here. Um, as we recovered and uh, some parties started harvesting what they could from the hag, see what we could uh, get done from there, uh, Alicia and Avalis started cleaning out the magic pot that uh, she had, which is cool because apparently we can use that to feed quite a few people. So good for us with the uh, aftermath of the Charlotte Dragon fight. And also, uh, let's see here, uh, along with reuniting with the B team, I talked with Watto about my uh, somewhat being self conscious about my lack of certain things, but he says he's totally fine with it and says that I have much better ass sets. And I believe uh, with that, that's uh, where we left off. That was perfect. And like I said, I'm feeling quite thankful for you all uh, being here this evening, spending some time with uh, your old DM on old Black Friday. So everyone earns a point of DM inspiration this evening. But we can't just stop there. We've got to give you out some fact inspiration. So I'd love to hear some Thane facts about you all, starting with Akia. Akia, could you give me some Thane facts about your character, please? All right. Uh, Thane fact Akia has been working on a present for Lotus. Uh, back in Bryn Shander, 
Um, some of y'all might recall that I informed Gaiman and Abelus that there, that there are lights, the axe with the light on it, their necklace with the light on it, stopped working uh, several days ago. And what Aki has been working on, um, with help from Watto, um, Akia had Watto uh, secretly ask uh, Lotus, trying to nonchalantly get Lotus to divulge what their favorite... Um, because Lotus has always talked about um, this one particular activity that she enjoyed doing. Uh, Akia has asked Watto to gather some more information, and Akia and uh, Copper have been working on a special device using the special tinkering ability to record and replay audio. And Akia, at this point, when everything has calmed down, is going to pull out from the crate that they loaded when we left Bryn Shander on this trip, if y'all recall, a device about the size of a mini fridge and they'll hit play and it'll loop through um, three tinkering objects worth of audio with just a very short recording of Lotus's favorite karaoke song and one more device that will take immediately playback um of audio spoken into it so and a microphone and while all this rp that's been going on in the rp channel uh there has been a karaoke machine set up for lotus to play with and i assume get everyone else to play with as well is this where we discover that uh wado got confused as far as what um i i'm going to this leave song leave. is and it ends up being you know, we all had to be rickrolled. I'm going to leave that up to the Lotus and what she would have told Watto her favorite karaoke song was when he attempted to do it sneakily in a way she would not expect. That's fabulous. Excellent. Thank you so much, Akia. And, uh, Gaiman, if you didn't uh, hear me when uh, I was giving these out, make sure to add a point of DM inspiration to our character sheet because I gave everyone one tonight because you guys are all here on Black Friday and I want to get you guys all in the black when it comes to inspiration. I mean, you, d you didn't see me posting memes in chat? Oh, I do see those now. Sorry, I'm... Uh, very distracted by the main coon that's staring at me, looking at, at me like he is about to strike. That that's fair. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, Walter the main coon is looking quite dangerous today. Uh, anyways, now that we have learned of Akia's thane fact, let us ask Alicia. Alicia, can you give us your thane fact for this uh, evening? You by me you may be muted. They have not talked at all. I'm not sure they have a microphone tonight. Uh, if we do need to come back, we will come back to them. Uh, so let us pop on over to the the druid, Mister Avalas. Uh, sure. So. Um... For a thing, fact, I guess, or thing, fact, I guess, maybe I have two. One would be this new art of karaoke. Um, I think the song I would sing as I look through the book. There's this one emphasizing freedom and uh, the cold. Um, it's called "Let It Go," so maybe I'd sing that one. Mm. Um, and otherwise. Um, I haven't told anyone in the group this, but um, while well, I got the call from Sylvanus to protect the Ten Towns, um, I'm starting to think maybe uh, either he's forgotten about me or 
he's uh, a little punch drunk for, I really don't know what we're doing out here anymore. Oh my gosh. To the feeling of being forgotten by your god is not a good one. No, but this song will help, I think. Mm. I'll cue it up. Mm. Uh, karaoke, let it go. I, I, I hope that that's not been overdone. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm having PTSD. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't understand. On the air. On the on the, our flight back from Florida, this was what the year I want to say it was a year after um, Frozen came out. Our flight back from Florida, we had just gotten married. We're coming back from our honeymoon. We're on the plane, and there's a small child sitting behind us, and they're watching Frozen on repeat on their DVD player with headphones, which would normally be fine. But for 30 minutes straight, they just sat there staring at that song on repeat, monotonously saying, let it go, let it go, let it go, over and over and over. And it wasn't until the parents finally had enough did it stop. Oh, please tell me she was also kicking your chair. She was not. Had she been kicking my chair, that would have been the final straw. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that the uh, the Frozen brought up uh, some type of uh, PTSD slash No, it terrible... was the prospect of, uh, of, of Gibby singing it. I mean, I'm sure you have a lovely voice, Gibby, but if you were trying to sing it as Atlas <laughs> in that song, it would have sounded like a six-year-old girl just monotonously saying, let it go, and um, I, I don't think my psyche could have taken that tonight. I had been told among the Yeti that I have a beautiful singing voice. Uh, uh, I'm sure that that is the case, but um, listen, brother, oh, I think it might be best if you just, you know... Uh, Hold off for a minute until I'm not a mile or two away. If it helps, I could combine it with the traditional um, throat singing and yodeling of my people. Uh, if you could just stick to the throat singing or yodeling, I think that might be best. Um, that, that song terrifies me. Lotus, perhaps we should strike this from the um, karaoke uh, book. You just see her take the uh, the stick of black charcoal and just go right across the page. <laughs> I've let it go. You just had to let, get one more in, didn't you? Yeah, that was fun, actually. <laughs> I love that. Well, uh, now that we know a little bit more about Avalos, maybe we should uh, learn a little bit more about Gaiman the Glaive this evening. So, yeah, I'll... I, I don't know. I mean, the, the more we, we sort of accomplish, the more I feel that it gives us room to, to focus on um, what they call public works for the, what remains of, you know, two towns. I mean, this is a golden opportunity uh, to, you know, have a, a phoenix uh, arising from the ashes for this northern community. And, you know, not only can we, like, re-establish you know uh, a proper library uh other you know intellectual bastions but you know you know i i have a vision of combining a great work along with my uh uh lack of having you know a pet in childhood and once the winter passes maybe we could have a zoo wouldn't that be something that would be something. Uh, I want to see I, the... I, I could combine my desire to travel and go around to various uh, learned institutions to finding creatures far and wide that no one's seen in the north and find a way to set them up safely, uh, you know, habitats here in two towns. I want to see that version of the movie where instead of... Uh... 
what's his what's that actor's name? Not Ben Affleck. Uh, the other one uh, makes Matt the Matt Damon. That's right, <laughs> Matt Damon. Instead of Matt Damon making the zoo, it's Gaiman. That would be a much more pleasurable experience for me. Uh, thank you, Gaiman. Now, uh, before we forget anybody, we've got to ask Lotus about her thing fact for this evening. Sure. So, while growing up with uh, Diamante, they would sort of uh, alternate after school going to each other's houses. And they would say that each of them had control TV, and they each had their favorite program, though they both enjoyed watching it. When they go to Diamante's place, they would always watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And, uh, of course, uh, Diamante always had a crush on Tommy. And Lotus always liked Billy, you know, being the geek, which... You know, considering everything with Wado shouldn't be too surprising. Now, when they went over to Lotus's house, she turned on something a little bit nerdier. Uh, it was on PBS, this show called Ghost Writer. Not the Marvel character Ghost Writer, no, Ghost Writer. It's this show, ran new episodes for about three years, star, set in New York City, and it was about a bunch of these middle school kids who befriended a ghost who could communicate only by writing to them, and they solved mysteries together. Oh my gosh, that's super cool. I'm just trying to compare Tommy and this other, uh, the other in my head. I, I don't know. I don't know how they uh, play out. Well, you have earned Faxpiration. Yes, uh, RIP uh, JDF, man. Uh, man, when I found out that he actually was a legit MMA fighter. I felt kind of bad for his opponent because you're in an, a, a, a no win situation. Because on one hand, you get beat up by the Green Power Ranger. On the other hand, you're supposed to beat up the actor. Well, it uh, looks like we've gotten uh, Lotus their faxpiration. Uh, Alicia slash Lex, are you able to uh, tell us your thing fact for this week, or are we going to just be uh, kind of listening in today? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. Sorry, parent got me doing stuff. Um, Elisa's thing fact... Uh, I think there was one time in Baldur's Gate. So, the supposed image of Lathander is that the dude walks around in uh, with gold sandals. Um, there was one time that Alicia had caught a vendor trying to hawk off uh, gold painted sandals uh, to people, saying that they were. Uh, uh, Essentially, she was blessed by the sun god himself. I uh, had to put a stop to that. Um, yeah, that was a very interesting situation of trying to tell someone that they can't make a living by trying to uh, do it off of someone's image. I feel like that is a, a tale straight out of uh, like the Christian Bible there. What do you mean we can't sell these carvings of Jesus? <laughs> Let us sell the things of Jesus. Come on. Um, excellent. Well, uh, everyone has earned Faxpiration. And I need to take us back to the world of Icewind Dale. Oh, no. Our friend Akia keeps getting dis uh, connected from Discord. So, when we last left off our heroes, 
you all had defeated the hag, and you had sat down for a long rest at a campfire within the cauldron cave. Now, I need to go over to this channel before I drop down a camera dog. There we go. Seated around the fire were, of course, your mini sled dogs, your companions, and all of those that uh, call yourselves friends f before this adventure. Bubbling is the cauldron that you have won from the hag, the mysterious magical item that Akia found within the cavern itself, and all of the separated hag parts now residing within your harvest bag. With the moment of danger hopefully passing, you all can rest as needed and then go after this treasure chest that Maud Chiselbone was trying to bargain her life for. With that being said, a bubbling cauldron of plenty, a roaring fire, and the mini barks of sled dogs fill the ambiance of the air. And yes, if you uh, all want a long rest, you can long rest at this time. And Avalis um, obviously goes to sleep as a wolf, but, uh, you know, eventually wakes up, snuggled amongst the dogs in his human form. Sure. Now, uh, one thing to point out, and I believe I mentioned this last time, any of the doggies that choose to sleep by Ikea seem to be unusually more sleepy and a little, uh, just a little tired, a little tired guys. So after so you go they're, ahead when they're around a Kia, they're they're sleepier. Yeah, they're acting kind of sleepy. I am very cuddly. Apparently, everyone else that they're around, they're barking, they're jumping, they're putting their pee paws on top of them. But the second they get near a Kia, it's like he is a uh, comforting wet blanket that just mm, knocks them out as they. Mm -hmm flip over and start sleeping. You're not snuggly, mate. You're too fucking hard to be snuggly. You just have common presence for whatever reason. No offense. Oh. Maybe my head pets are very relaxing. Right, but, you know, head pets different from, you know, snuggling up to someone or something. You, you kind of lack a fundamental, you know, quality, like softness. Ikea examines himself. I mean, don't get me wrong, mate. I mean, you've got qualities that people will kill for. I mean, you don't have to, like, sleep. You're naturally armoured. Some folks would, you know, take that as a blessing. Certainly. Um, I will... Oh, I need to switch out spells. And and infusions. I gotta do that before I forget. Yeah. Don't want to forget that. Yeah, if there's any preparations you guys need to make, please do so. And I should mention, uh, the concentration notifier it should now be back. So if you do cast a concentration spell, uh, you should now get pop-ups and chat for that. Uh, I'm going to use Akia as an example. Because this sh should do that.
And then when we end concentration, it does the whole thing. So uh, is there any role play or conversations that you all need to have this evening? Or do you guys wish to long rest and then go seek the treasure chest? Oh, yeah, I guess I should switch out my spells to get the water stuff. <laughs> you might want those. Real quick. Yep. It's a, um, be fine so long as I'm holding my breath. <laughs> how, how long can you hold your breath for? Like five minutes. And in the fifth age, age of magic, that's like fucking forever in a fight. Oh, yeah. You, mm -hmm. you guys don't think I'll need wall of water or water, 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 water walk at all, right? Just water breathing? I think that's all we need. I mean, water walk could come in handy. Good. I don't know. Yeah, I'll get... Why not? Just in case. I'll get rid of a conj all my conjure spells. Or I'll get rid of fireball, because can't cast that underwater. All right. Well, you can cast it, can. but... Anyone underwater immediately has resistance to fire. Mm. And, uh, um, or if I'm going to switch out from temperate to sleep to, um, uh, or from arid to temperate, so much, so I'm going to change those spells too. Okay, no problem. My One of my favorite new mods is that uh, Foundry tells me when you guys do things that you're not supposed to do. And I like to say it out loud. Then people are like, wait, what? What? What are you talking about? I didn't do that. I'm like, mm-hmm. I know what? all. I know that you just changed your spell preparation in the middle of a fight. And they're like, huh? Alright. Um, the shield and uh, weapon are no longer uh, infused. So the the plus one uh, flaming longsword and the uh, repulsion shield and I am I've changed my spells and I'm going to activate the oh the cloak of the manta ray oh wow that. Let me let just delete that. That's a big. That's a big. That's unfortunate that someone is feeling the need to cheat in the middle of a fight. Uh, and you know sometimes it uh, it's just like you you clicked a button and it prepared a spell and I'm like hey did you mean to do that and they're like no no I did not I I apologize and I guess the other one so uh, we repair. We do work um, mechanically. Uh, Kuma Q comes back just on a long rest, but uh, uh, we'll work through the night a little bit repairing Kuma Q after they got fireballed twice, yeah, it's basically. Like, uh, Lois, you know, still recovering from everything, just peeks up from you know her blanket with water. It's just like, Akia, I can, I can, I can help you with that if you want. I don't mind. Thank you. And um, they will accept your help. And Right. Um, and I would say that uh, Lotus, as she's working, will tell you, it's like, you know, I'm usually used to having, like, uh, music on while I'm working. Helps me concentrate, as strange as that sounds. Okay. They say. They're like, okay. okay. He's like, yes, I would usually have something playing on my uh, my weave phone. But, uh, if you don't mind, while it's working, it's like, um, uh, and she says this, uh, loud enough for everyone, it's like, you know, if you want, I could, uh, tell the story of, uh, winter tradition on my world. Which we call Christmas. Okay. 
<laughs> I, I mean, I, I kind of feel like we've got enough winter going on right now. We don't really need any more, do we? No, it's just that, um, uh, and I'll just give like the short version here. It's like here, you know, she talks about this uh, red dragon who would fly around the world delivering presents to all the good children of the world called Santa Claus. He sounds frightening. Hold on, pull the other one. Why is a red dragon giving up bits of its hoard? To just everybody. That doesn't make any damn sense. Well, it's not really his horde. He has this uh, team of anthropomorphic reindeer at his uh, shop in the North Pole who make the things for him to give away. <laughs> no, you, you, you're talking nonsense. Reindeer ain't got no thumbs, they can't make anything. Well, these do, but they're like anthropomorphic reindeer. See, they're kind of like me, like how I'm like kind of like a dragon, but you know, you see, but, I've got... But you're not a dragon, you're dragonborn. It's different. Well, yes, but these are like reindeer people. And it's also really interesting because uh, you have there's uh, my mom told me this when I was you know a child, but you know he she told me that Santa Claus would come to uh, would change into a red dragonborn and come to the mall, and you could go and you could uh, sit on his lap and tell him what you want for Christmas. Okay. Uh... So, how, how the devil do they get Christmas out of a red dragon going around giving out stuff from its hoard? That, I, 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 can't, I can't put it together, I'm sorry. It doesn't The, the name intervention just doesn't make sense. It is sort of strange, I willingly admit, from what I've done some uh, research, is that it has, I think, something to do with his name. Uh, Santa Claus or some way in a some way the name translates from draconic to common. It's weird. It's a weird thing. All right. But he, here, it's like I even... Here, um, I'll show you. This is what he would look like when you go to see him in the mall. And she opens up her notebook and you see that. When Watto sees this, he says, Wow, I didn't realize he would be so stylish. His poofball hat leaves me feeling kind of jealous. Yeah, but it, 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 it's weird. Look, why is his outfit red when he's red? Well, if he was in the buff, I mean, with, with the hat, that one, I don't know, but he's wearing red clothing, and he's red himself, it just, it's not, why did it make more sense if he wore green, or something else, complimentary? Hmm, see, Lotus just taps her chin, like, you know, I never really thought of that, but that probably would work better now I think about it. But it was really interesting because, you know, my mom thought she was fooling me for a while. It's like she would tell me that it's like here. And then when I got older, I, I asked him, it's like, are you the real Santa Claus? And he would be like, oh, no, young lady, I'm just one of his many helpers. The, uh... Tabaxi, standing back, just kind of nods his head in approval as uh, he hears about this scene involving Santa Claus. But, you know, it isn't, the holiday isn't just for children, it's just uh, 
also a good reason for families of all kinds to get together and exchange gifts and, well, the eve of last Christmas was my last day on Earth, and it's when I had the big fight with Mom, and I went to the work party and got drunk, and then that's when I got the text message, and, you know, when those things found me. A reassuring hand is put upon your uh, your shoulder, Lotus, and it is the hand of Wado. Now, everyone, have we decided on whether or not we should eat from this cauldron? He looks around to all the other members of the party. I mean, I don't know. Have we given it a thorough enough scrubbing? I know some uh, usage of prestidigitation was uh, put into play. Do we feel that that was enough? I don't know. I kind of feel like we need to mark. I know Alicia burn the inside of it. <laughs> I remember uh, Alicia like, melts away any time. chance that it's not contaminated. Mm. And uh, Wata will look over to, to you, Akia. What were you saying, Akia? Contamination? I was just saying that uh, Alicia put a lot of work into cleaning it out last night. I believe they were working on it for multiple hours. Yes, I pointed out all the spots she missed so she could go back and uh, clean them as well. Mm. Well, I do th think that it uh, might be a good idea for us to try it out. What what liquid could, do we need to put in? Supposedly just water, according to my scans. Mm. Although the hag did mention that there are other uses for the cauldron. Perhaps we can discover more in time. Of course. Is there a volunteer? Uh, volunteer for what? To eat from the cauldron. Oh, if it can create any kind of thing. Uh, there's a stew that my people would make. Uh, made from uh, well, leftover parts of an Orox, but it's pretty good. I threw it up in chat for reference. Um, I guess I guess we will at some point head over to the frozen underground lake and check the water quality. So the frozen underground lake that's here is completely frozen. Uh, if you're wanting to get in there, you would have to bust through the surface. If we want to retcon, I could take create <laughs> water. Somebody's <laughs> see my song. If um if we if we had this talk before spell selection, I could take create water. I mean, we also got war skins, don't we? Yeah, it can, uh... Yeah, it doesn't have to be the entire 30 gallons at a time. Uh, right. I mean, or we could... What you're describing, I mean, yeah. Or, or we could... One gallon feed most of us. Yeah, we're or, trying to get all the dogs and everything else, too. Well, I mean, or we could oh, just, right. uh... Oh, I mean, we could break, we can break some ice. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, check and make sure that it's, uh, clean. Although I'm not sure how clean it even really needs to be since it's Magic Cauldron. Uh, game in at this point, we'll just rush over to, to the ice okay. and break out Lucille. Yeah, in the future, if you ever need create water or purify food and drink, I do have those available. I just don't have them memorized now. I don't. Because, you know, Druid. <laughs> so... 
Uh, Akia never eats or drinks, so they're just going to volunteer that they do not need you to do that. <laughs> All right. Um, Wait, did I give somebody Lucille? I gave yeah. Lucille to Akia for, for purposes. Yeah, and you see Akia working on it. Okay. Uh, in that case, we will not bust out Lucille, which would have been the perfect thing for this. In that case, we, we will do wield Lefty and Rusty, and we're going to attack, attack the ice. All right, you can definitely give us a, an attack roll against the ice to see if you can burst open the the ice, and we'll just take Why one is attack. This nonsense! Why is it just saying attack and damage? It's just broken. Uh, let's see here. Uh, give me one moment. I think I need to go in because of the update. I need to go to ready, set, roll. I need to look at the thing. Always roll multiple. Dice. Uh, give it another shot. See if it does it. Hmm. Roll damage. Let's see here. Let me click on somebody and see if it is happening from my side of things. Okay, it is not happening from my side of things. So everyone, really quick, hit the three gears, or two gears, excuse me, on the top right hand side of your foundry that says game settings. Let's all go to configure settings. Oh, Fang of the Remorhas. Akia, okay. So those are all working. So uh, if it's not working, let's go to Configure Game Settings, go to Ready, Set, Roll for D&D &D 5e. And let's make sure all of our quick rolls are on. Always roll multiple dice is on. All of those kind of things. Let's see if that uh, helps us out. But, uh, you know, I'm going to take a lesson here from uh, from Jacob, from XP to level 3. You're a le eight, level 8 barbarian with magical weapons and ginormous muscles. I'm going to assume that given enough time and preparation using those things, you bust open a hole in the ice down here in this underwater uh, cavern to create water for your uh, party to put into the cauldron. Chunk of ice in the cauldron and start warming it up. Okay. As you put a chunk of ice into the water, into the cauldron, it starts to melt. As the heat from the fire begins to heat up the bottom of the cauldron, and as it is turned for water, from ice into water, is anyone stirring the cauldron? Uh, probably not Akia, since they uh, don't eat and know nothing about food whatsoever. Mm. Yeah, but didn't you study the uh, cauldron? Uh, I did, but, uh, you know, know nothing about cooking. Alicia, Alicia will stir the cauldron. So Alicia is stirring the cauldron, so after a minute of stirring, the cauldron churns out... A nutritious, nourishing stew within. The water kind of transforms into this substance. Uh, everyone th that can smell it is allured in to this stew because it it's intoxicating. You guys are hungry. You've been fighting all night long. You slept in a cave. So this is definitely an opportunity to fill your bellies. So just in case, I believe that not all of us should eat from the cauldron. Oh, now you bloody well say something. So Alicia, say, as the uh, as the smell reaches 
uh, Lotus, you see her, it's like, her feet just, like, lift off the ground, and you just see her floating over towards the cauldron, like, you know, like, cartoon character. What the fuck? Alright, I'm convinced. I'll hold off. And you hear Gaiman's just... Is it stuck on... <laughs> Sorry, okay. Mm -hmm. Hungry. Sometimes. Alicia, the taste is that of a hearty, well-seasoned beef stew. Seasoned with thyme and sage. Providing a hearty, savory flavor to this stew. Good. Lotus will look up with wide, childlike eyes at you, Alicia, and say, "Is it, is it soup yet?" I'm just concerned um, you don't want to taste like people. Uh, it doesn't sound. Oh, sorry, it doesn't taste off. Uh, here, and I guess after your mess kit, I'll pour some in there. Lotus will take some up in the bowl, then uh, as she's about to eat, she just says, well, bon appetit, and she'll take a bite of the stew. What? Bon apple teeth? Eat, eat, eat a bone and teeth is hard. While they eat, like he will take a bowl and analyze it. With uh, ritual castings of detect magic and identify, so it'll take 25, 20 minutes and just uh, poke at it, poke at their stew for twenty minutes. Sure, uh, this is a thick, hearty bowl of beef stew that seems to have been created from water. There is a ambient note or moat of magic to it coming from a magical object itself. Uh, GIF for explanation of what the beef stew looks like. Where's Ray Sentinel supposed to be? I'm sorry, I, I know I'm completely ruining everyone's immersion, but is it configure settings or configure controls? It should be configure settings and then you should be able to go uh, and scroll down to Ready, Set, Roll, and you should be able to configure your settings for quick rolls for all of the things. I, I, if it's alphabetical, I don't see it. Okay, so what must have happened is Ready, Set, Roll, roll did not load for you, so you might have to do a, a, a shift reset to get it to load. I like to do shift reset because it can clear your cache. Sometimes caches can cause this issue. As Gaiman is fixing up that so he can roll multiple dice, uh, the one known as Danica will walk up to you all and say, Well, everyone, this has been... Very interesting, hanging out in the hag lair, eating these delicious stew that has been prepared by the magical item. Did Alicia just death ward themselves before they ate the soup? Oh no, I already ate it. This is just part of my regular preparation. Yeah, you know, it's their day, it's their regular routine, you know, get up, do their hair, cast Death Ward. Mm -hmm. Like dying today. Also, I probably should have done that before I ate it, but oh well, too late. It smelled really good. You had no choice. A Alice will eat the beef stew off on his own, kind of with the dogs. Uh, there is a definite uh, urge from the dogs to also get some beef stew. He'll share his bowl with mm. a Zenith, at least. Mm. 
They, they appreciate that. You've earned their trust even more than you already had it. Because, you know, dogs like it when you do those type of things. I mean, we can do more than just, you know, share a, a wee bit. No weird, no weird spasms from Alicia or Lotus yet? No, no one's uh, fallen over dying. No one's uh, started to crack out or turn into a hag themselves. They're just enjoying a nice bowl of soup. And I'll go ahead and bring some over for Watto as well. Oh, that would be so crazy if everyone just turned into a now. hag. Gosh darn it. Mm -hmm. Everyone but Akia turns into a hag. That'd be nuts. Well, you, you did not tell me that you put the hag into the stew. Unless, are you guys cooking the hag? <laughs> no. I mean, oh, I think that would go hag. without saying. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Hold on, I gotta put this part of the adventure away. You hear the DM close the book. <sighs> and throw it over his shoulder. Maybe next time. Akia goes on a solo quest to find a cure for us all being hags. I, I mean, there isn't anyone in the party that that's much of a dick to do that kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. it would be funny and what their character would do. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as after everyone is filled up with breakfast, the one known as Blarton will say, I remember some talks about treasure. The hag was screaming that as you guys were bashing her head in over and over again with that fire poker. Are we going to go look for this treasure today? The ninth of Uktar? Mm -hmm. Wait, Seems hold up. Like why are you saying it that way? I mean, is there like a special significance about today's date where you shouldn't go, you know, moon fishing? No, the ninth of Uktar doesn't hold any special significance to me. Does it hold any special significance to you all? Not to me, but again, it's kind of weird that you're bringing up the date. So, no, I, I apologize. I, I didn't think. No, it was odd when I did it. I just thought it was was a good idea to tell you all what the date was. Oh no, it's it's good that you did that, Blarton, and she'll flip through her notebook. I need to keep track because of you-know-who, and she'll thumb over at the imp for it, wherever they are. The imp is busy gnawing down some stew. And the imp said, Yeah, it is a good idea, because, you know, you've got till the 8th of Nightowl to finish your little quest. Yes, and we'll get to it when we get to it. I just don't want you being like Navi and bothering me the whole time. Just being like, hey, listen. Oh, uh, Navi, I know who you're talking about. You know, me and Navi used to eat lunch together in the Ru Ruby Palace cafeteria. Ah, uh, I remember her first mission. She was torturing this little elven boy. Uh, what she's uh, doing now would blow your mind. Uh, well, uh, uh, our imp companion is reminiscing and looking over at uh, uh, Lotus. Gaming would like to, if at all possible, surreptitiously, surreptitiously pick up a small stone and flick it with enough force that he will break the bowl that the imp is holding. Absolutely. And once again, learning from XP from level 3, uh, you are rock sails through the air and as he's going to put spoon to bowl and enjoy another spoonful of delicious magical stew it shatters he looks up tears in his eyes he says what game I was gonna eat that and he looks down trotting to the floor as the dogs have ran over and consumed all of the, the stew from the ground. So is it the next day at this point? Yes, it is the... Uh, 
The ninth of Luktar is the morning of. You guys have long rested, and uh, whenever you all are ready to begin your treasure hunt. All right. Unless anyone needs to say something to uh, to another character, I believe we're ready to go out to the, of the lake and set to up the, a little fire. To uh, the map of the lake. Do oh, we? Do I, I ever? Think, I think uh, the first thing that Akia is going to mention, though, as we leave, is that um, we should take care not to rile up the uh, the harpies. Oh yes, as you say that, you see Lotus was about to pull out a cigarette. Her hands, you know, because she's having nicotine withdrawal shakes, and she's like, "Oh fuck," and then she puts it away. Wait, you cigarette smoke gonna roll up the harpies? Well, apparently they're attracted to tobacco smoke. But I can deal with it for now. Why don't you go back and smoke in the cave? Well, what if you, what if you all need me out here? What if there's something down there you need my help with? You know, I... Listen, it's gonna take you all what, five minutes to go smoke a cigarette. Go have a smoke. We'll see if we can't figure out, you know, a more, uh, you know, high-minded approach to this as opposed to just flying around in the dark, in the wet, in the cold. All right. And as she does, she'll move over and wrap her tail around Watto. But, I mean, you wouldn't want me to go into that cave all by myself, would you? Listen, you've got five minutes. Don't take the boyfriend and fuck him. We got, you know, we got a timetable here. Come on. You'd be surprised what I can get done in five minutes. I wouldn't want to know. Jamin will now turn to a key and say, "Listen, do we, do we have a map of this fucking lake and we figure out where the, the deepest parts be? The treasure might be buried." I do not. God damn it. Avalus, do you have the ability to locate objects such as... I do. I took that spell last night. We have to be within a thousand feet of it, though, so it's best if we have a rough idea. But I could say try to find, you know, any large chest in the water. Uh, any... Just in case you missed it, uh, Akia does give you a spell refueling ring for, for the day. Oh, lovely. So, Orpheus, how big is this lake? Loch Denishir is humongous. I'm glad you asked. Uh, you are essentially looking at a uh, not necessarily a Great Lakes situation, but uh, you're not far off. Uh, well, a thousand foot radius, so that's it's a big circle, but it's not huge. Okay, so at its deepest, if you're uh, if you're wondering, it is. About 800 feet. And then... So the Loch Denisher is the medium lock. And then the largest is Mayor Dualden. In depth. And then in its... If you're wondering like how far around it's going to be... I'm looking through the module here. I should have had this ready. You're looking at roughly half a mile. It, it's that would be its diameter. So not a nearly Great Lake situation, but pretty big. Uh, should we disable Boon of the Moonlit Path? Uh, it should have uh, disabled on its own, did it not? It didn't. 
when I uh, had a long rest, but I, I turned mine off. You should. You guys will no longer need it. But uh, yeah, you guys have walked out of the cave. Lotus can have her cigarette. Uh, Mr. Watto is looking on and <sighs> a little bit of what's the word? Maybe may, maybe a little bit of a gaming. Why'd you have to speak up like that, man? I'm just gonna go with her. But now we have to stay back. So you said it was a uh, half a mile across. Is it like a long lake? Is it kind of like? Circular. I mean, it's not like perfect dimensions, but like trying to get a sense of like what the grid pattern might be. Sure. Let me take you guys back to the the map of the Ten Towns. Alrighty. So we're back to Ten Towns. We all are located here at Loch Denishir. Now the lock, it's kind of shaped a little like eggplanty, where it's kind of narrow at the top and then it gets wider at the bottom. And I guess its widest point is a little bit longer than a half mile, but on average, it's going to be half mile-ish across. Versus Mare du Walden, which is, it's almost like apple shaped a little bit. And Red Waters, which is just like a gash in the earth there. Atlas, you said you had a uh, uh, locate object, and that was like a thousand thousand foot uh, radius. Yes. Or so. And are we at the top or the bottom of the lake? We're at the bottom of the lake, right? You guys would actually be kind of in. I'm trying to shift ping. So over to this side. Okay. All right. I think. Wait, locate object? The second level spell? You sense the direction as long as it is within 1,000 feet of you. 1,000 feet, yep. Okay. As long as you have seen it up close. Okay, cool. I'd be looking for. I can't look for what's in the chest. I would just be looking for a chest. So it doesn't. If there's multiple large chests, mm -hmm. then I could be locating a red herring. Obviously, so. Well, um, we we can go about a couple of different ways. We can have a systematic approach where we you know we measure out you know based off of this you know off the map the uh, appropriate uh, radio of uh, what Amnes can detect or also using Amos's skill set, see if we couldn't communicate with any fish or the creatures that might be in the water. No, I, I just became Aquaman. <laughs> that seems like a very efficient use of our resources, Gaiman. Gaiman's just going to tap the crown on his head. So, I was going to become a giant octopus, um, because I could swim fast and it would look cool and I could drag up the chest, but I can't locate object uh, while I'm an octopus and it only lasts 10 minutes. So it might be best if I stay in my human form at least until we find it. All right, wait, wait, wait. so <clears throat> can you can you ritual cast that spell or is, or is it just you've, you've got it up for 10 minutes when you no. cast it? I would just have it up for 10 minutes, but I could cast it for a, um, I could cast it several times. Mm. We'd be at this for a minute if we just took a, a slow systematic approach. We need a, we need a, oh, what, so I just always going on about cheat code or something. The water breathing spell though, uh, will last 24 hours and I can ritual cast that. Well, we might as well get out of the way. Uh, can, can, 
Alice, can you speak with creatures that uh, are in the water? Uh, I believe I have. To, I oh, I always have to speak with animals prepared, and it's a ritual. So yeah, I can do that. Okay. Uh, um, I, I I guess while you're ritual ca casting, um, uh, water breathing, um, Gaiman will like kind of slosh out into the lake to see if get a sense of like what creatures are there, whether it's fish or something else. Okay. Uh, this sounds like it is the perfect opportunity, then. Let me go back right, to here. Ten people max, by the way. Ikea doesn't need it, by the way. Perfect. This sounds like it's the perfect opportunity for me to grab all of your guys' characters and initiate. How they say... Now, game's not going out too deep. He's like... Waste, waste deep, trying to like see what's out there. See, what, like what tries to get away from him. What, it, what, what he stirs up. Yes, this is to initiate a, a skill challenge for you all, as we. Uh, it seems like we have some things to accomplish here in a quick amount of time. Like we're almost in a montage section in a Rocky movie. <clears throat> So, uh, we are exploring the frozen depths of Loch Dinnishir. The first challenge, kind of present to you all, is finding the perfect spot in the lock to wade out, break through the ice, find a kind of a, a canvassing pattern all of those things that need to go into finding this chest. So, you guys are level 8. There's 5 of you. I'm going to need 4 successes before 4 failures. The difficulty class of this challenge will be a 16. There are 3 secret skills. There will be a complication if we don't make it quite through. And there could potentially be a fight if you uh, do not make it out of this challenge round successfully. So, with the wind howling, with the surface of Loch Denishare looking potentially terrifying to everyone, let us begin this challenge. Akia, you guys are trying to canvas the perfect location to break through the ice. Find where you could potentially get to this treasure chest, and set yourselves up for the best success. Oh, and I need to take us back one more map. There we go. All right. Um, I would like to use nature to um, point out where people should and should not step and to just identify where it would be easiest to uh, cut through the ice. So nature is one of the secret skills. Dropping the DC to an 11. Okay. So you have accomplished one success. You find that there are several spots that you guys could potentially cut, but you find the perfect place for you guys to make weakness in the ice for you to slip through and get to this treasure chest. Excellent. Akil, we will pass it on to Lotus. Lotus, you all are going for this treasure chest. Akia just pointed out several spots in the ice that you guys could make good cuts, but he has found the perfect place to make a great cut. I would say, uh, along with the uh, the inf that information, uh, Lotus would, uh, I would say, looking around, trying to, uh, you know, sort of think like what would be like the right materials to, sort of like looking at the ice, using the to figure out like what right materials would use, like what uh, right temperature of uh, fire to be used to, uh, to melt through it, 
like basically inv uh, investigating the ways to uh, cut through it while still uh, keeping themselves relatively safe. Absolutely. Uh, you can do an investigation check here. DC is a 16. 19, all right. All right, that is two successes. Yes, uh, you see that if you were to bash through this with bludgeoning type in implements, it would be quite bad for you all. You guys could potentially uh, cause those who aren't resistant or immune to cold damage to fall through the ice and potentially drown. You will need to use sharp instruments with a surgical precision in order to do this. Okay, we will pass it forward to Alicia. Alicia, you have all of this information gained from Lotus and Akia. What do you do? Um, sorry, I had to change mics. Um, you guys are still able to hear me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, situation nature. I do a perception check to hmm. it's going to be a little difficult. Um, there are some places where it looks like the ice is already thin and it's possible to kind of like somewhat see past uh, that layer. Uh, yes. If you were to kind of like look through it, you think you could try to look through and maybe get, capture some, some glimpses into the darkness? Yeah, I want to try and see if there's anything that immediately... I do have the light spell up. Alicia almost always has that up. Um, I'm trying to see if there's like some way of, even though it's going to be very limited visibility, if there's a way to kind of peer just a bit into that's below the initial surface of the ice. I'll make a perception check. Absolutely. Ooh, that's a 26. That is a critical success, bringing you guys up to two. So, uh, you would see something that might uh, be very uh, useful to you all going forward. That is, there is what appear to be green lights coming from the bottom of Loch Denishir that you think that uh, might be telling of something important or perhaps of something that you could use to guide you to find this treasure chest. So there's these green lights coming up from the bottom. Okay. I will relay that to everyone. Okay. We haven't broken through the ice yet, have we? Uh, nope. At the moment, you guys have found the perfect spot. You know how to do it uh, in the perfect way. And now Alicia has pointed out that there is some kind of crazy green lights kind of hanging out that uh, you could pay probably take advantage of. Okay. I'm um, not sure how... <clears throat> Sorry. Congested. Um, I'm not sure how I, uh, Gaming will be able to take advantage of the lights, um, assuming we're on to his turn. Yes, we should be on Gaming's turn. Okay, so what I would like to do um, is, I don't know how you want to rate this, but use, use my weapons in an unconventional manner. So... Unless the ice is, like, magical, I would like to use the Remoraz Whip. Um, because, you know, it, you know, i got a 10-foot reach with that. Um, but I could also kind of hold it in such a fashion that when I activate it, 
it will like melt through specific parts of the ice and kind of use that to score the ice a little bit and then using other you know axes or, or, or swords to cut the rest of the way after you know kind of melting away in, in an appropriately safe fashion so as not to just shatter the ice altogether. Sure. Absolutely. Do you want, like, an intelligence base a weapon attack or something? I, I'm not sure how you want to... How many, how you want me to roll for that? Uh, what I would take for this is a survival check or intelligence athletics. When's I'll the- give you intelligence athletics. Athletics is one of the secret skills. So this will be at a D- lower DC of DC 11. That is a, that's a 19. Oh my gosh, 19, 19, 19. So uh, your plan goes off perfectly. You perfectly score the ice and set it up for the next person to come through or for you to come through with your various chopping or slicing weapons to make perfect entries into the ice. Or Alice could turn himself into a giant ape and just be like, what punch? Yes, and uh, <laughs> just destroy the lake with you guys on top of it. Avalis, do you turn into a, uh, a giant green ape and just one punch. <laughs> Maybe grape ape. Um, you know, he could turn into a giant octopus and just <laughs> just tear out the ice with his tentacles. Mm-hmm. Um, but instead, I think he is going to use animal handling and speak with animals to convince the sea life below to scatter. Excellent. Yeah, give me an animal handlings check. Animal handlings? Nineteen. Oh my gosh, so many nineteens. That is a success. So you are all successful. And you have created a situation where there's no interference from animals. You have the perfect slice where everyone can safely enter the water and enter the water to find this hidden chest. And, of course, there's this glowing green light now kind of illuminating the water up from the hole that you all have made. So the second part of this challenge, with the ice shattered, the maw of water beckons you into Lac Denishir. Below, you believe that there is a silent, eerie world filled with aquatic life, perhaps knucklehead trout, Your next challenge is to navigate the perilous underwater environment to locate the hidden treasure chest underneath. The number of characters, of course, is five. The number of successes that we need is five. The DC has increased to a 17. There are three secret skills that have been changed. If we end a round without having five successes, we will need to trigger a complication. So, now that we can begin, we will begin with Akia. Alright. I think uh, just in case there's um, some weird sorts of current underneath that makes it difficult for someone to uh, reach the opening later. Uh, Kia is going to set a rope. Um, just set a rope um, anchored above the water and just have it uh, going down. Is going to tie, um, just tie a light on the end of the rope so it's easier to see under the water. Someone can grab it and use it to guide themselves in the darkness just in case something goes terribly wrong. I like it. Uh, so how do you want to adjudicate that? What, how do you th- think your character would do this? Hmm. 
Hmm. What skill would that be? Uh, tinkering or survival? I will take a tinkering check here. Okay. And that is a 28. That is a critical success. So please tell us what your critical success looks like in setting this up. All right. So um, just the anchor point up above the hole just somehow becomes magically one with the ice even stronger than it was uh, before uh, as opposed to weakening the ice in some way and just the rope is hanging down and it just looks like a string of beautiful Christmas lights uh, that you'd be able to see from uh, anywhere where you had line of sight on it you could just grab it and pull you straight up that's super cool Excellent. So now you guys have this glowing uh, bulbs of Christmas lights made by your uh, your favorite uh, automaton, Mr. Akia. Thank you, Akia, for guiding the way. Lotus, the gaping maw of darkness has been changed to now being more festive. Ah, uh, yes. This definitely reminds Lotus of Christmas lights. And uh, she'll go ahead and uh, take hold of the rope and start uh, make, making her way, uh, making her way down, and uh, I guess I'll get here. Uh, she will do it using acrobatics. Excellent. Yes, give me an acrobatics a check. The DC is a seventeen. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and spend my expiration here. Uh, that is now 18. an 18, making it a success. Please explain to us what your uh, your acrobatic uh, trip down the uh, the line looks like here. All right. Uh, she's definitely remembering uh, is it, uh, when she was in, like, gym class as a kid. And, you know, the only Dragonborn, some of the other kids here, it's like, telling me, it's like, you can't climb that. It's like, you can't climb that with your scaly hands. And she's like, oh, really? Watch me. And then she does so. F she like climbs up the boop, boop, it's the top, and then climbs right back down, and then says, "What now?" And then you just see her just effortlessly uh, take it to the rope and uh, climbing down. Though she's she makes sure that uh, to stay within eyesight of uh, everyone. She does wants to make sure uh, everyone can see her. Absolutely. So uh, we see Lotus uh, carefully scramble down. That is two successes of the five you need. Alicia, how do you uh, assist in this problem? Uh, Alicia is going to... I've been in this... Uh colder weather for a little bit of time now. Uh, it's going to try and take precautions as best they can against hypothermia as we're going into these cold waters. So I'm going to make a medicine check. I love it. I'll burn that next though. And I gotta say, this soundtrack that I put on, it is very uplifting, and I'm enjoying it. That's an 18. 18. You are making sure that no one is going to feel the effects of these hypothermias. At least try and lessen them as much as possible. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Alicia, for that. We need to ask Gaiman. Gaiman, the path is ahead of you. There is a string of lights. You just watched your friend Lotus do like a triple sow cow into the water. Uh, 
I guess I'll make a survival check to sort of gauge depth uh, where we're approximately located. Um, yeah. Sure. And also, uh, you know, test the uh, survivability for the others. I mean, I I'm resistant to cold, which I think most of us are, but maybe not all of us. Okay, 15 is pretty close to the mark that we need here. I'll but, uh, throw out the effects for you if need be. Absolutely, because we're looking for a 17. Just made it. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Okay, so you guys are looking at four successes so far. Almost a perfect round. Avalus, you're up. Okay, it looks like perception hasn't been used this round. I will um, do that, trying to see if I can't find, uh, you know, looking down where it might be. And just to use a, the, uh, a thing to get advantage, I will use a spell slot of locate object to aid in my perception. Okay, you have advantage. Okay, get that out of the way, and no whammies, no whammies. Oh, all right, well, 26. Okay, you, got, you can see that there's a clear path down from where you're at. There doesn't seem to be any hostile creatures leading straight, following that path of lights, uh, to the bottom of Loch Denishir. You guys have the path ahead of you. Okay, with that, we need to move to the final stage of the challenge, round three. You all have delved deeper into the heart of Loch Denishir, where the light of the surface has begun to fade into memory. Your object, of course, is to find the treasure chest and then hopefully safely ascend to the surface. We are looking for six successes. The difficulty is going to be an 18. There are three secret skills as you all are fo following the paths of light down into the water to the bottom of Loch Denishir. Akia. All right, I'm going to... Um, hmm. So I want to try and identify what those lights are. Um, I don't know. I would use... I'm kind of like, okay, I could use nature to think about if they're a natural source, or I, I could use arcana to think about if they're a magic source, or some something like that. I just want to try and figure out what those lights are. Okay, try to figure out what those lights are. What, where, where, which direction are you going to go? Um, how how bright are they, and are they moving? They are not moving, and they are bright enough that you guys can kind of make out that green color, as and it's getting stronger and stronger as you are coming to the bottom of the lake. Okay. Um. Then I would like to use. Um, and, and I do have the Cloak of the Manta Ray up, which gives me 60 foot swim speed if that ever becomes relevant. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to use an Arcana check to determine if these are magical lights of some sort. Sure. Let's do Arcana. Hey, that hits the DC. You believe that these are not naturally occurring lights. There is an odd etherealness to them that is making you have the heebie-jeebies. Hmm, heebie-jeebies. All right. Uh, can can I talk underwater? Since I don't breathe. I feel like this is the one of those. Well, of course we can talk underwater, but can you hear what they're saying? Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good question. All right. Um. 
I will attempt to say those lights are creepy. I believe they're not natural. And however that comes out is however it comes out. Okay. Uh, can you give us a performance check underwater? <laughs> All right. I would say that's decent. So uh, everyone around uh, Mr. Akia, you guys can uh, kind of make out what they're trying to say to you. Okay, that is one of the six successes you need. Lotus, you guys are following these kind of ethereal lights to the bottom of this trench to find this treasure chest. All right. Uh, I still think it's probably best we should try to keep avoiding them. So I'm going to uh, use my acrobatics, keep making, keep uh, making my way down the rope, uh, just making sure that I can uh, uh, that I'm ready to uh, to move, uh, just in case if. Uh, Whatever those lights are, or anything else uh, jumps out at us. Absolutely. Let's see it here. DC has risen to an 18. Mm. I would like to see it at cost. Alrighty. Would you? Would you prefer? Uh, if you like, I could. I could boost it for you. You know what? Yeah, sure. Go so for that you it. don't like. I, I don't yeah, know. It's kind of scary to succeed in yeah, the like underwater. We you know what? Yes, you're right. We don't really know what's going on in here, so if you're cool with boosting it for me, let's yeah, go I'll, ahead and do that I'll so I don't get it. the debuff. Sure. <laughs> All right. That is your one use for this round of the overclock. So you guys are sitting at two successes uh, as Lotus moves acrobatically through the water, uh, propelling herself as if she was an aquatic creature herself. Alicia, your party is underwater, traveling through Loch Denishir, following the pathways of both these ethereal lights and the light string made by Akia to find this treasure chest, being pointed in the direction by Avalus's magical locate object spell. What have heard? Getting off the heat of GBs. Alicia is just going to continue monitoring. Mm hmm. All right, a 12, unfortunately enough, will not get to the DC, so it's going to give us our first failure. Uh, of the challenge as uh, there's a lot of pretty lights like to create a tugboat situation. So, Gaiman will tie a rope to himself um, and have it trailing behind him so that people can grab it and, and, and hold on for dear life as he is using his tremendous muscles to just swim to the bottom. Absolutely. Give us athletics. Strength this time. Not athletics. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> athletics intelligence. Intelligence. Um, and are, are like, are we all feeling the cold down here? Uh, because of your guys' magical equipment and uh, Lotus's already uh, pretty natural resistance to the cold, uh, so far there's been no issues. Case, I will mm, can't justify rage, so we'll just go straight athletics. Oh. 
No issue. As uh, you are able to tug them along using your mighty power. Cool. It should put you guys at one, two, three successes, and one failure. Avalus, you all are following the tugboat known as Gaiman through the water, able to breathe it using your water breathing spell. Following your locate magic spell, it is taking you to the bottom of Loch Denishir. Uh, he would try to use his um, survival uh, abilities to help kind of um, guide like Gaiman in the right, like the best path going down there since the uh, perception failed. Uh, I don't think I have anything that's going to help. Well, survival uh, is a secret skill in this ooh, part yeah, of the challenge, okay. so the DC is five lower. Well, I will risk it for the biscuit um, and faxpiration if I have to. Sure. Hey, 23. 23, with it being a secret skill, that is a critical success. Yeah, it is. So, uh, you are able to point out the exact point that you all need to get to, uh, and you point out the location of the treasure chest. And if you all will give me just a moment, I need to put you all on this map. Floating down to the bottom of the water, you seem to have found the origin of this intense green light. Tufts of seaweed, kelp, all of these underwater vegetation kind of float frozen in the water. And let me take you all to the map as you are at the bottom of the lock. Purdy. Avalos, did you long rest? I see you have like a lot of missing. Oh, people. that's the um so uh Caleb, that's the wrong um Avalos. Oops. Oh, did I just kill too many people? It's the UA one that we want. There we go. Thank you, sir. Oh, and I need to drop a... So, yeah, you guys see this treasure chest kind of sunk to the bottom. It is a little weird that it's just sitting there like that. Atlas will mind that he can become a giant octopus and just carry the chest up if they want to do that and deal with it on the surface. Of course, if it's the wrong one, we're going to feel stupid. <laughs> uh, right. uh, are we still in the skill challenge? No, you guys are no longer in the skill challenge. Okay. Um, I would like to investigate where the light's coming from. Is it coming from these plants? It seems to be coming from these, like, uh, would you say chasms within the ground, kind of, kind of rising up from the ravine. Anyone have any idea where this light's coming from? Yeah. Lotus will cautiously walk forward and kneel down and over its end up. Uh, does it seem like magical in any way? Yes, and uh, Aki would know that this is not natural light as well because he uh, did that in the challenge. I don't feel like drawn to swim down the chasm and touch it or anything, do I? Hmm... Let's see. 
I have to look at something on your character sheet first. Oh goodness. Uh oh. Hmm. No, you don't. Hmm. Just based That's on that. Oh, uh, But uh, if you all want to know more by looking down at the bottom, uh, you could look into the ravine a little bit more closely with either an investigation or perception check. Learning something different, le looking into the ravines. All right, I'll give it a go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, Avalis, you are able to Dirty point, 20, but yeah. point out to everyone that there seems to be a broken wooden structure at the bottom of the ravine. It appears to be several shattered planks. A strange wooden statue of a woman. You can't make out her expression on her face or any solid details, but you can see, is it a statue or is it a figurehead? But you can see a long pole, perhaps a mast, at the bottom of the ravine. Shipwreck. Yes, but why would a ship be giving off this kind of light? It's possible the ship was transporting some cargo that glows unnaturally. Something that glows unnaturally. And Lotus starts wondering if she's getting radiation poisoning right now. <laughs> uh, did Lotus see the uh, HBO miniseries Chernobyl? Uh, yes, yes, she did. Oh no! <laughs> All right. Um, I would like to ask if the lights, because the light, the light on the map is pretty diffuse. Uh, so I guess what I need to ask the DM is is. Is it a diffuse light like it is on the map, or are there, like, individual points of light, and it's just a bunch of them? The light seems to be coming up in kind of blotchy points coming up from the shipwreck at the bottom of the ravine. Should we investigate further? Well... It's a shipwreck. I'd imagine it's it's all the way down here. It's probably something that happened some time ago. We're not going to find any survivors or anything. And the treasure we want is, and she points over there. Are there wow. any nearby fish? There are no nearby fish. Any sign of life at all, like a crustacean or a bottom dwelling something or other? Uh, the only sign of life seems to be these frozen plants that are nearby this treasure chest. You did that on purpose. <laughs> oh, poop. Okay. Well, I can't ask a fish. Can't do my Aquaman thing. There might be more valuable things down the ravine than in the chest. We have no way of knowing unless we investigate. If you wish, I could become a uh, get a giant octopus and just swim through really quickly see if I can find anything of note oh that would be that would be a good idea just uh, make sure to holler for us if uh, you encounter anything I'll uh, stick up a tentacle maybe I can swim very quickly as well maybe I should go down with you while the other three stay here you can do 60 feet, right? Uh-huh. Sweet. Then, yeah, you can keep up. All right. Uh, I think Avalis and I are going to investigate the shipwreck closer. Okay. Uh, party, you see Avalis. Avalis, you need to turn into a giant octopus. 
Yes, giant octopus, please. Is, uh, was that Lex or Alicia saying that they were going to try and stop us? Yeah. Uh, remember the last time you decided to go poking around and, uh, Kimiku... Oh yeah, Kimiku got cooked multiple times. I notice you have a habit of curiosity. In fairness, that chest might be just as dangerous as whatever's down the ravine, and we are planning on touching it. We at least know that it's a chest that's there. We don't have no idea about what's down in the ravine. And control what happens if we bring the chest up with us to the surface, but if we go further down, there's nothing really we can do. Do I suddenly feel tired, DM? Do you suddenly feel tired? Yeah, like I just got exhaustion three. I don't know why you got exhaustion three. Also, why are you zero hit points? I, That's a, I don't, also a good question. I don't know. No. That's a trap! You, you, you're, you're, you're fine. Nothing physically has happened to you. Oh, nothing physical. Nothing uh, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Environmentally, something has happened to you. You're underwater. <laughs> Atlas dives in the ravine. Yeah. Akia goes as well. All right. As you all... As you both dive into the ravine, can each of you give me a charisma saving throw? Okay. I would use uh, DM inspo on that. Absolutely. Hmm. This is Avalus, I think. Yeah, this, this one seems a little bit scary. Uh. Okay. Okay. Uh, can both you gentlemen join me in secret chat, please? Oh, shit. Oh, no. And we were no more. Okay, gentlemen. Uh, swimming down towards the pirate ship, you are not uh, forced back. You aren't changed into a different shape but you both now have a strange proclivity. Uh, you both now have to speak like pirates for the rest of the adventure. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it. Okay, we can go okay. back. Sounds good. All right, and then you both begin descending down towards the sunken ship. Right. Um, Octo Vast. <laughs> Or Avapus, I don't, I don't know. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that one very much, but whatever. Tedious. <laughs> would uh, would look back at Ikea and uh, say, you know, an octopus or whatever. Um, Our matey, let's find us some booty. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. You hear any of that from where we are? Uh, yeah, you guys have pretty high passive perceptions. You can hear uh, Avalos and uh, Akia speaking. Well, we don't hear one sort of conversation because we don't speak octopus. You notice that one of his um, tentacles is in like a hook position? Just because. <laughs> oh, if I recall correctly, Avalos is able to speak in. Correct. Yeah, I can speak in, in my wild shape now. Um, but I'm more asking of, can I hear that their dialect has changed to The lid on one of Akia's eyes is now closed. Uh, yes, you can perfectly hear that. <laughs> perfectly oh, hear the dialect. Uh, as you guys get deeper and deeper into the water, you see that there is indeed a broken apart ship at the bottom. Uh, you don't see any crew or 
crew pets, like a parrot, or maybe a monkey. You do see several cutlasses that have been rusted and almost destroyed by the flow of time. There are broken apart barrels and a large canvas flag that seems to be facing towards the bottom of the ravine. I'm sorry, what was facing toward the bottom? A large canvas flag. I be. That might be some identification. <laughs> Arr, these waters be treacherous, but the loot be worth the risk. I'll lean over I to. to oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'll lean over to Alicia and, like, why do they keep talking like that? Let's board the ship. I, I have eight know. arms for plundering and not a single hand for swabbing the deck, savvy. I. And yeah, we'll we'll start looking around. All right, as you start walking around the broken apart deck, uh, you see that the the place has been ravaged by time. The only thing that seems to be kind of left in place or uh, still uh, salvageable, you see a metallic statue, kind of glimmering in the glowing green light. Uh, the statue is made of black metal. Almost Shiver me ice like. <laughs> Shiver me timbers this wreck the older than the crackhead himself. <laughs> I be checking the colors on this flag. They're black. Do you turn it to I... face up? I check the colors. <laughs> By uh, Davy Jones Locker, this would be a trove fit for a cephalod captain. <laughs> uh, as you uh, turn it over uh, to to face forward, Akia, you see this upon the front. Avalas, they be. Flying the colors of pirates. I. But the ship's secrets are ours for the taking. No landlubber can match me in an eight legged might. <laughs> Careful of that statue. <laughs> you guys I'm are really welcome. curious how the fuck this is working with you two landlocked boys. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that statue. It may be cursed. Shardolin. This is cursed. That is cursed. What pirates ever be worried about to curse me, D? These pirates Versus might have been... Alicia. I've got plenty of Shardlin ashore. If that is a cursed Shardlin statue, it may be what have sunken them to the depths. Uh, as you all are looking at the statue, you can give me a religion check. Sure. Oh dang. Yeah, Ab that, that's about right. Avalis is just another naked woman statue on a pirate ship. Nothing to be wor worried about. I is a fine piece of booty. <laughs> you can bring that home to show my show. Uh, Akia, you know exactly what that is. That is a statue of the goddess Umberly. The sea bitch. Evil goddess of the sea. <laughs> uh, the bitch queen of the storms herself. Aye, mm -hmm. we be wary of this one. Uh, would I know... Would I be uh, aware of what would tick her off? Umberly? The shorter list is what doesn't tick her off. That's if you what, want okay. to be freed from below. <laughs> uh, you could give me a, another religion check to discover that, or you could give me an insight check to see what you think that the goddess Umberly, known as the sea bitch, would want to be done with her statue. I will insight that. Mm. Um, and you know, I'll even... Yeah, 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 just regular. Ooh. Um, 
Can I fax probe that and potentially succeed at a class if I need to after that? Sure. Why not? All right, delete that. That's a D8, I believe, still. Yes. Is a 17 mm. successful or within range? And if so, yeah, I'll take it. So a 17 would tell you that Umberly, the sea bitch, loves the ocean. She loves the tragedy of men's uh, attempts to tame it or to try to tame bodies of water as water is the most strong element on earth. So you think it would actually be an affront to her to bring her statue yeah. back up to the I mean, surface. That would be a what? An affront. You would uh, insult Umberly by taking her statue up to the uh, top of the of the lake. Our sounds like she sunk this ship on purpose. Uh, yeah, she, she. You think that Umberly would take it as an insult if you were to bring her statue back to the top? Got it. Uh, Ar, uh, mateys, you find uh, anything else with your good eye? Uh, anything else to, to find? Uh, <laughs> I, I will. So you'll see uh, Akia, like a pirate lifting their eye patch, will uh, lift up their closed <laughs> eye and casting and concentrating on detect magic will scan the ship. Uh, so uh, as you s begin to scan the ship, you see that there is the, of course, the statue of Umberly. Ooh, to tells me you're concentrating. Uh, you also see that there's a compass that seems to be glowing. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go over to the compass. Mm. This... I see it. This compass appears to be magical. I may be thinking it's not just an old wreck. Perhaps we can uncover your, uncover its golden heart, I. Uh, I will, uh, not touching it directly, because, uh, Alicia wants me to be very careful. Uh, without touching it directly, I'll, um, scoop the compass into a baggie into a bag or sack whatever i have on me mm -hmm. ziploc bag <laughs> yeah uh, into a ziploc bag csi bum bup, bum bup. wait that's law and order sorry <laughs> yes so you have this magical compass that was pinging off your detect magic i believe we've plundered everything of value that we should Let's head back up. Aye, we can show our booty to our friends. Aye. <laughs> uh, so while that was happening, Gaiman, Alicia, and Lotus, what were you all doing while they were down there uh, having their adventure? Um, well, I don't know. Did we good. see the statue from where we were? I would yeah, say that how, you... How big are we talking here? Uh, you couldn't make it out from where you guys are. They uh, swam to the the depths, probably 30, 40 feet down, and then they started adventuring around onto the, the raft, or excuse me, the broken down ship, so you wouldn't be able to make it out from there. You would have to swim down there to get a look yourself. Did we ever see where the light was coming from? Uh, you were standing on it. Okay, so it was just like the ship. Mm-hmm. Okay. How big is the statue? Uh, the music seems to change for some reason as you guys are on the board of the ship. Uh, the statue is about the size of a football mascot. far away is it from our perch that I'm on with uh, Alicia and Lotus? Uh, it, it would probably be about 60 feet of movement to get up to the statue. Did you get antsy while we were down there? <laughs> yeah. And then there's the there's this treasure chest right over here. The treasure chest is that. 
do you do anything before we get back, or can we interact? Um, I'm gonna get within ten feet of the treasure chest, treasure chest, and then I'm going to attempt to whip it to see it. Make sure it's not a mimic. Okay. As you get within ten feet of the treasure chest, Gaiman, can you give me a charisma saving throw? Oh shit. No whammies. Fuck. Ooh. So uh, I'm just going to tell you, because two, because this will be more than half the party. Gaiman, you are compelled to speak and act like a pirate. At least until the end of this adventure. And that is all. Oh, shiver me timbers. That's just fucking awful. <laughs> Got it. Lexi is going to love the rest of this session. <laughs> Lewis just Lewis turns over and like, now Gaiman's talking like that too. What the hell's going on? Oh. <laughs> blast on myself and the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh so wait, I, I have to to whip the booty. Make sure the booty isn't gonna try and bite me. So your whip cracks on the top of the uh, of the chest uh, the chest seems to react just like uh, any ordinary wooden object would when you whip it it makes a loud uh, knocking noise even underwater and as that knocking noise plays a sound wave kind of issues out from the chest kind of echoing out through the waters You all can see, nearby the chest, bodies hidden by algae, covered in seaweed, begin to rise from the ground. The first that rises... Oh, I said I was within ten feet, so I'm all the way the fuck over here. Yep. Yeah, so uh, this dude kind of like rises from the seaweed, and then from around him, you see four more of these underwater bodies rise up from the darkness. As they look to you, they point to you and they say, you ain't be taking our treasure this day, ya quitter. And they will roll into initiative. Batten down the hatches, me hearties. Dead men tell no tales and it's time to drown some bilge rats. Exactly. All of those words. And I would like it if you all <laughs> would roll into initiative as these dragger have risen from the depths. Lotus, Alicia, where's Gaiman gone off? <laughs> He's over there by the by the chest. Just so you know, these gentlemen basically look like this. Ah, I accidentally I'm not gonna lie. That. I'm not gonna lie. That is some pretty sick looking artwork. I agree. Game Gaiman looks at the uh, monopolistic Durgar captain and says, "I see. I can tell by your name what killed you. Capitalism and greed is what brought you to your demise, lad." Greed is good from where I stand, and when you'll be standing is nowhere. Oh, I need to roll. Oh, you may be standing, but you ain't among the living. Oh, uh oh. Hold on, uh, I gotta give us some underwater combat. Oh, that's not combat music. There we go. Okay, let's look at the initiative order. Oh, it looks like the abusive Draugr is up first. He looks to his captain, and the captain points forward towards the, uh, the group, kind of uh, sequestered over there and you see the dragger push off the ground and begin sw-
swimming towards you all. Uh, he's got a 30 foot swim speed. So he will swim, uh, move, swim as his action. And that'll be it for the Draugr. He will pass to Disputed. Once again, we'll swim. And swim. And he is going to pass to Akia to see what Akia is going to do. Akia, you're up. Uh, taunting the Draugr. Aha, it'd be hard to swim without skin, eh? And, uh, yeah. Let's see. Akia will uh, start off the battle with a casting a mirror image on themselves. I don't believe that it is concentration. So I should still have detect magic up. Oh, That's don't correct. Your movement speed if you don't have a swim speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. These were closer up here, so I think I'll swim around. Nope, can't reach there. 15. 25, 30. Oh, no, wait, I can reach it. All right, I'm going to swim up here to engage with this, with the worst Draugr. And um, I guess I'll do a uh, scouter. Let me pull that up. Uh, monster type undead. These are indeed undead. Dirty 20. Okay, so uh, Draugr are very hardy. They've got about eight hit die. Uh, they have dark vision, and some of them have blind sight. Uh, they have a giant great axe that you can see, and they have gnarly teeth. You also know that you don't want them to bite or slash you, because they will try to inject gross algae into the wound. You also know that Draugr can curse you. Oh, and you get resistances and immunities. They are resistant to cold and fire damage and immune to poison. Right. I will yell that out to the group. And Akia, who would you like to pass to? Uh, I will pass to... Um, let's see. I, I, think I'll, I think I need to pass it to Gaiman so that they can uh, get their stuff rolling. Speed, it's half your normal speed underwater. Unless you or have you a swim reason. speed. Yeah, I don't have a swim speed. Alright. So, my turn? It is your turn. Alright, I would like to rage. have to move <laughs> all right so I'm going to draw my flaming longsword which really isn't flaming but it's a longsword and I will recklessly attack this fellow right in front of me 
monopolistic. And I will show him the ways, the evils of capitalism. Okay, he will take that damage. As it winces in pain. Ugh. Uh, is it rolling versatile and not regular? Yeah, it rolled a, a D, D10. Yeah, yeah, it did. Mm, shouldn't be a D10. Because I've got I got a shield in one hand. All right, it should now roll your D8. All right. And then uh, extra attack. Yarg! A seven. For 15. Yeah, that hits for 15 damage. The monopolistic dragger captain looks like he is ready to fight back. Not if I make him walk the plank first. God damn. You didn't expect that. Yes, okay. Uh, if that is it for Gaiman, the Draugr captain will steal. Alright, yeah, that's all I got. I'm just gonna stay put. Alright, they will use a bonus action to start swirling water around themselves. Giving them, uh... Until the start of their next turn, attack rolls against them will have disadvantage as they are using the water as a natural shield. Uh, they are then going to pull out their axe and attempt a great axe swipe at Gaiman. Yeah, that hits. They deal a uh, damaging blow for 11 damage against Game Actually, and Blade. you know what? I'm going to Stone's Endurance that, because well, fuck that. Alright, so I take a whopping 2 damage. There we go. Two gigantic creatures attacking each other. Let's see. The worst Draugr will go. It's face-to-face uh, -face with Akia. It is going to target Akia. Akia is going to attempt its Mariner's Curse upon you. It tries to curse a creature it can see within 30 feet. The cursed target must make a wisdom save. On a failed save, the target is dazed for one minute. Well dazed, the target is also... Okay, you succeed. Right. As a bonus action, it attempts an eerie moan. Uh, your curses won't work on this metal man. All right, give me a con save. Hi, Bobby. Oh no! <laughs> you said it was an eerie moan. Oh yes, it's true. Oh shit! <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. I'm sorry. I jinxed you, brother. I'm All right. Sorry. It's eerie moan gets into your circuitry, causing you to have disadvantage on uh, the next attack roll you make before the end of your next turn. Okay, that is it for the creature. Uh, it will pass to Lotus. All right. Uh, all right. You. All right. So let's see here. Uh, Alicia and Avalis are the closest ones to me, but this will probably work for you guys. This will definitely give uh, Avalis more movement, and like here, since I won't be able to do much, but I'll go ahead and buff you guys up. I'm going to spend uh, three sorcery points so I can twin cast uh, haste. Third level spell slot targeting Alicia and Avalis. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's like, yep, you see her put up one pointer finger, then rotate it around clockwise, say, time, 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 to see what's become of me. Then you both get hasted. Alright, and let's see here, I will go ahead and can't really move too much, but still want to try to get away from here. So I'll go ahead and bop this way. And... Uh, you know, it's probably a good idea here. I'll go ahead and spend my bonus action. I'm going to go ahead and Misty Step just so I can get a little bit more distance between myself and uh, some of these other combatants here. Let's go ahead and move. Doop. There's this BAMP over here. Doop. And then I will... That'll do for me. And then I will go ahead and pass to Ap uh, Octopus Apolis. All right, Octopusavilus, you're up. Octavus or Avapus, yeah. Avapus. Um, Avapus. The um, the Christmas day, the fifteen that I got, did it? It oh, it just made me talk higher. Did it make me more greedy or anything? Uh, all it has done so far is made you talk and uh, act like a pirate. Because now that I'm, like, super hasted, I could just, like, take that treasure chest and go to the surface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think what he's going to do, actually, is um, go right up to... Come, come, oh, sorry. Come to this guy. And he's a little... He's feeling a little bold um, due to being hasted. Um, he is going to attempt to squeeze this guy. Oh, it's a denizen of the deep. Ooh, not with an eight. Um, all right, he's gonna use a second uh, uh, action to, because that didn't go well. Um, he's going to let's see. Is he put an action? Oh, it sure is. Um, he's going to disengage. All the way up there, and if I revert from a wild shape, I keep the haste, right? Correct. Okay. Let's see if I can do this right. Uh, do, 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 do. Reverse. Okay. Perfect. All right. So that was his. Well, yeah, that's his bonus action, and that is uh, that's it for me. Uh, has to. Oh, there's still a grave one that hasn't gone. I'll pass to the grave one so we can control into the next round. Alrighty. The grave dragger. Uh, it is going to start swimming. 30 feet here. It's going to swim 30 feet here. Uh, it is going to target Alicia. And... I think it can do this with its eerie moan. Yes. So Alicia, it's going to use its bonus action to try to give you disadvantage on your next attack roll. Can you give me a con save? Hey, or can you roll that? I'm trying to reroll it. No problem. Ooh, uh, you got a 10. Including Bless? Yep, and that's including B Bless. Alright, this one is. Wait, you have. You had 1d4, you had plus 1d4 and minus 1d4. 
Somehow, I wonder if you still have Bane on you. I didn't see it on my feet when I last bet. Let's make another save, just in case. Yeah, you're getting a minus a d4 somehow. Let me look at Bless. And he's also rolling 2d20 for some reason. Well, I think that is just representative of the four on one side, seven on the other. Let me see if this oh, fixes it. Yeah, I get it. Sometimes you have to do this. Okay, well, for some reason it's minus in your D4, so we'll take that into account uh, for for why this is happening. But for right now, we'll give you an eerie moan. But now, Alicia, it's your Aye, turn. Hi, papi. Hi, papi, screams out uh, across the ocean floor. Um, yeah, for some reason my fountain crashed, I'm not get back in. Um, so what is it, disadvantage on attack rolls? So it's, uh, you have disadvantage on the next attack roll you make before the end of your next turn. One just got right next to me, correct? It uh, um, it has a five foot gap between you and it. Oh, okay. And you've been uh, hasted, and can... so has. So I'm giving everyone haste. Oh, and Avalos already has haste. All right, then Alicia will swim closer to it, um, and we'll cast. Uh, cantrip for three demons. I mean, I think it's a constitution saving throw I'm going to make. So, swimming toward it, spells. Word of radiance. Oh my gosh, that's a huge word of radiance. It's a 17, it's able to duck out of the way of that radiant spell. Alright. Um that's gonna be it. Okay, you have control uh, of the initiative. Ace action. Is dodge on the list of things it can do? Guys, I've been playing this game for so long. You can dash, disengage, hide, use an object, or attack. Okay, then I will haste disengage and then swim back but uh whatever i think it was 10 feet of movement i can go back and then i'll pass it to uh i'll pass it to akia all right akia in round two you're up all right uh i will let's see um, I think it would be funny to do that, so I think I will. I'm going to, unfortunately, Lotus is just five feet beyond the range of the spell, so I'm going to provoke as I move five feet away from Worst Draugr. Now, if he does hit, which he doesn't, so never mind. All right. Thank goodness. All right. Um, I'm going to... Uh, because I see Lotus trying to get away uh, from these creatures, but she is getting really far away from the party. I'm going to Vortex Warp, and just at a Vortex of Water, she's going to disappear, at, with consent, of course. 
Uh, yeah, and go she for is, it. and she is going to reappear. She's going to reappear right here where I'm pinging. All right. Yeah, that'll be my action. Set. Right here. Or is that is that too far away? Uh, pop that spell right up for your spells. Oh no, I mean too far away for you, Lotus. No, I'm sh uh, no, I think. Sh uh, is that there or was that uh, up north a yeah, bit further? Up, up further. Two. So like it'd be very, like really far oh, that, away from them. Yeah, that that but is I, perfect. Because I I think you can if it's too far away you can still swim up I I guess. Um, yeah, and I've got I've still got plenty of spell slots. I can still do misty stuff if I need to. All right, uh, so that's my action. And I'll go ahead and use that spell slot. And I will move uh, back in to re engage with this draugr. Um, I don't want to just be super easily pincered, so I'm going to move around it a little bit. Um, as I move around it, I've still got detect magic up. Is this chest, is this chest magical in any way? The chest does not appear to be magical. All right, uh, cool. That's my action. I don't think I need to use my bonus action for anything. Uh, okay, uh, and then I'll pass to. I guess I'll pass to Lotus. Alright, Lotus All right. is up. Looking at what we got going on here, so you know that doing fire down here in the water is going to do reduced damage. Uh, I will say that I don't think it's metagaming for me to think that uh, lightning here underwater would be a bad idea. No, no, I don't think you would. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. Uh, so I will go ahead and do a uh, spell slot for transmute spell and go ahead and chuck my uh, grenade but instead of uh, fire for the fireball I'm going to instead make it a thunder damage so it's like yeah the ethereal grenade appears in her hand and it's like Flavy transmute thunder Pass that at base level here. Now, let's see. I think I might only be able to get two of them, but at least we can spread the damage out a little bit. And I'll just go ahead and keep it at third level. All right. All right. So 17 deck save. Do ooh, for 36 thunder damage. Uh. Uh, they shouldn't have advantage, so excuse me for that. Uh, but they both fail, both taking full damage from thunder. Uh, they don't seem to be vulnerable to thunder, but they both take full damage. There's a huge boom underwater as the ball of thunder erupts, causing this kind of bubble to explode. Uh, yes, Matthew, what's up? Uh, just so you know, uh, it appears to be showing a health bar. That that should not be happening. That's not normal. Where is that happening? On the Draugrs that just got yeah, damaged. Yeah, that I uh, targeted with the, fi with the fireball. Uh, I see. Oh, give me one second. I'll just turn that off real quick. Or should I leave it? Yeah, it's fine. I'll start it off. All right. All right. Well, I seem relatively safe here. I don't really want to burn another Missy Step unless I absolutely have to. So uh, that's all for me. So that'll give uh, the two Draugr that took damage the opportunity to steal. They will take it. Grave will go ahead and steal, and they are going to swim into Alicia's face. 
They are going to target Alicia, and they are going to grapple or attempt to grapple Alicia. And Alicia, that is a 19 athletics to try to grapple you. Yep. yep, they seem to have got you, so this one has got you grabbed. Uh, and this guy does have a swim speed. So he is going to start swimming back this direction. And that would be... Actually, you know what? He will just stay there, stay in place, and he will continue to pass. Oh. So he will pass it to Disputed. Okay, Disputed is... It sees that there's not a lot of targets anymore. They all swam away. Uh, so they're, it's going to swim 60 feet uh, towards Avalos using its uh, action and movement and it is going to target Avalos and it's going to unleash its eerie moan let's see what we got here is it a con or a wisdom this is con either way it's a failure okay Uh, as you will have disadvantage on the next attack you make before the end of your next turn. Okay, uh, they will go ahead and pass to Adelaus, speaking of that. Okay, gotta find something that doesn't make an attack roll. Um, looking, looking... Don't have a lot of combat spells because wasn't expecting a lot of combat. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold fast, lad. Do your best. Uh, there's no reason Moonbeam wouldn't work underwater, right? Uh, it's magic. Do, do I feel like that would work underwater? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's radiant damage. Does it say anything about undead? No, of course not. Otherwise, we have lightning, and I think that might be a bad idea. Moonbeam it is. For an awesome idea. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he'll do that. And uh, that's his action. And he can still move. So uh, 15 feet. He will try not to leave them to Lotus. So he'll go this way. That's not the right button. Uh, and I will pass to Gaiman. I'm going to recklessly slash at this underwater baddie. All right, a 16 is a hit on the Draugr captain. All right, more reckless attacks. Oh, and that was a, a 14. Uh, 14 is a miss on the Draugr captain. It, uh, I'll succeed at a cost. Anytime they take damage, we get health bars, just so you know. That's fine. I, for this combat, you guys will see their health bars. That's okay. You guys would see... Uh, okay, uh, so you will take true damage to 25% of your current hit points as you slash into the Draugr. 
he uh, spits a foamy spray of seaweed into your mouth as you slash him. Are that be unhygienic. scurvy. Uh, so you... Alright, I applied the damage. Now it's time to re-roll fresh damage for this succeed at a cost attack. That's true. 15 damage. That's a huge hit. Alright. Damon, anything else for you? I stand my ground. All right, the Draugr captain will begin. All right, uh, on their turn, they will target Game in the G Glaive, and they are going to attempt to put their Mariner's Curse upon you. Can you give me a wisdom saving throw, Gaiman? All right. I'll be using the uh, Deem Inspiration for this. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a 15. I'll succeed at another cost, I may. You may. And here we go. Then we'll put, bump you up to an 18. Oh, no. So you will be confused. So you're able to wiggle your way out of the effects of this curse, but in doing so, it boggles your mind. Now, do I get a save at the confusion being at now the end of my turn? Wait, no, my turn's already long past. Never mind. Silly question. Now, the Drago will use a bonus action to give himself the water's veil, and... Uh, The Draugr is going to start bumping around to kind of get himself into a blocking position by the uh, the chest here. And I did forget to mention the Draugr has one Paragon power. Alright, he will pass to Worst. Uh, Worst is attempting to fight with Akia. He's gonna roll a d6 to see if he gets his curse back. He does not get his curse back. So he is going to target Akia. He is going to attempt to bite Akia. That's a natural 20. All right, uh, he is attacking a mirror image. Okay. So he uh, blows through your first of three mirror images. Uh, he will now use his eerie moan once again. Can you give me a con save? Okay. He gets you with the eerie moan. They will now pass right. to the grappled Alicia. He will attempt it. Okay, that is on the nubbin. Oh, yeah. You have discovered, though, that even though the creature succeeded, he seemed to take the full brunt of damage from that effect, but not the additional effects. Meaning these creatures might be weak to the radiant form of damage. 
Uh, takes no damage. Oh, takes no damage. Oh, okay. No damage. All right. Then bonus action. Then use weapon of faith. Mm hmm. Bringing out a spiritual weapon. Uh, that's a hit. Why go for 10 damage? <laughs> Absolutely, and I will drop a spiritual weapon on the map for you. All right. We'll pass to the last Draugr on the map. The abusive Draugr. It's going to swim 30 feet with its first movement. It's going to swim 60 feet with its action. And let's see, is Avalus within 30 feet? He is. Avalus, this Draugr, as it's swimming with its propeller-like feet, it attempts to curse you. And give me a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, I'll, uh. Yes. Ooh, can I fax that? Absolutely. Delete. We're still at D8 until level 10. Oh, son of a bitch. Well, you are within three here. Okay, what's the curse do? I'm poisoned, disadvantage, necrosis. Oh, screw it. Yeah, I'll um, I'll succeed at cost. Okay, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty uh, not good because you're dazed and poisoned. Ooh. Oh shit! I can move five feet now. That's lovely. Uh, but you are hasted as well. Oh, that's true. So, wait, you're hasted and you're slowed. <laughs> slow. So it's just normal now. Oh crap! So, what does this mean with so I keep the AC bonus from haste. I still get the deck save bonus, but my speed is now normal because it would be half. And instead of two actions, I don't know what I would get. So uh, when you're under the effects of slow, yeah, you're, I only get one. It like takes a choice. you take yeah. a negative two penalty to AC and deck saves, and you can't use reactions. Oh, you do. So that all becomes normal. Okay. So what does my action economy look like if I'm hasted and slowed? On your turn, you can use either an action or a bonus action, but not both. Regardless so of the creature, away, then? regardless of the creature's abilities or magic items, it can't make more than one melee or ranged attack during its turn. If you attempt to cast a spell with a casting time of one action, you got to roll a d20, and then you roll an eleven to see if it comes off. So this haste is, just does nothing then. Slow overrides it. Uh, because you still would have the effects of haste on you, concentrating from Lotus. Uh, but yeah, I think a slow overtakes your haste because you can only take one action when you're slowed. Okay, that, that was a bad succeed at a cost. Oof. Yeah, it was. Okay, so it didn't damage you. So it's going to control initiative and pass to the Draugr captain. All right, the Draugr captain. Uh, let's see here. It's fighting with Gaiman. It's going to target Gaiman. Uh, gets that back. It will probably need it. It's going to attempt to bite Gaiman. But a, a 12 is not going to hit Gaiman. No, it's not. All right. It'll use its bonus action to give itself a water veil. Well, I mean, it knows that I'm confused, right? Oh, wait, no, it's not a matter of movement. It's a matter of uh, continuing that uh, disadvantage. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Yes. Sorry. No, you're good. Okay, and then it will go ahead and pass to Disputed. So it can deal with this moonbeam. All right, it's starting its turn in the moonbeam. Yep. 
Uh, that is a success because yeah, my DC it, the DC was sixteen, so it takes uh, eight radiant. Okay, eight points of radiant. Uh, you discover that it takes uh, double damage from radiant damage. Okay, uh, this creature is going to swim out. And it's going to start moving towards your spellcaster. It fought many a spellcaster in its day when it was a pirate. The trick is to jersey them. You pull their shirt up over their head. That way they can't see. And you, you tie it off so they can't do the, the, the hand wavy component shite either. Damn it, don't tell you the them ideas. You jersey them. This this is I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so uh, Lotus, it produces towards you an explosive spray of necrotic and chilling seawater. Can you give me a deck save? All right. As it vomits. I mean, this. We're, we're all sounding like pirates, so I, it could be anybody. It's not necessarily game. It could be anybody. <laughs> That's true. And you pass your deck save. What are you complaining about? Mm -hmm. So you would only take, I think, one point of cold damage and then one point of necrotic damage. All right. Concentration. Um, Lotus, you were damaged. Do you wish to steal? Uh, yes, I will go ahead and steal. Let me just check some real quick. Alright, let me see some real quick. Alright, can we can't do another uh, fireball. Everyone's too spread out. But I think. Alright. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do twin spell. Uh, let's see. Alright, yep. I'll go ahead and uh, twin spell. We target uh, Disputed here and the Captain. Uh, spend. Can't upcast that. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and burn the last of my sorcery points. I'm going to go ahead and upcast it at fourth level. All right, so yep. So like I said, this is targeting uh, Disputed and the Captain for a uh, DC 17 intelligence save. All right, here we go. Disputed and Captain. Okay, so Disputed definitely fails, taking the full damage and is under the effects of your knuckleball. Uh, the captain uh, seems to have saved. So it takes half damage. All right. In that case, I'm going to go ahead and burn uh, secure signal spell slot for Misty Step as bonus action. Mm-hmm. to the edge here Doop. and then half speed underwater goes here all right that'll do for me so that'll give the damage once the opportunity to steal okay here we go uh this will be dis 
disputed or disputed is already gone, and uh, oh, both of those have already gone. So you still control initiative. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, in that case, I will then go ahead and pass to Gaiman. All right, Gaiman, uh, you can give us the the last round of the evening. Oh no! Okay. So while confused, a two, I'm pretty sure, means a bad result. Yes. The creature doesn't move or take actions this turn. Boo. That sucks. Okay. So okay. the DC is uh, 10, my turn. Plus your, 10 plus your proficiency bonus. Oh, so 13, and is it a... Uh, Intelligence. Intelligence? Yep. I got this. Or not. <laughs> oh, and uh, I'm still confused. Something that uh, I, th I think uh, the other groups on the server are playing with, and that I don't know if we've officially stated it, uh, but there's the rule where you guys can strip effects off your characters that are negatively affecting them by spending hit dice. It is a rule that we have been playing with on Thursday night. I don't know if we've ever. Uh, explicitly stated it here for this game so that is something that you guys could do in this game so we just trade the hit dice for removing a status effect that's correct and i'm pretty sure well, it, for one like that it's three mm -hmm. i was about to say what was the what's the cost yeah, it's three hit die all right i'll do it i'll burn three hit die okay so you can burn three hit die and i believe that that interaction I think it... Does it happen at the start of your turn? Oh, uh, well, in that case, I'll have to wait. Uh, and I'm okay with you uh, backtracking and doing it at the start of your turn so you can take your turn, because that's more fun. As we all know, I'm all about the fun zone. Let's see. Uh, oh. So I've... I've um, I'll... So I do that, and I, I get to take my full turn? That's correct. So you just All right. spin your hit die, and then you're ready. So go ahead and do it. All right. Uh, so 11, I'm assuming that's going to miss. An 11 will miss the captain. Uh, 17. A 17 is a hit for 17 damage. Cool. Cool. Okay. That was a much cooler turn. So, uh, Gaiman, then you can control who will start us next week. All right. I'll have... Does anyone in particular want it? Otherwise, I'm passing it to a key. Okay. Uh, I pass to a key, then. Okay, so Akia, you will start us off next week. Akia starts us out next week. And I'm going to pin it. I'm gonna clear chat. I'm gonna take us back to the start page. And I wanna thank everyone once again for coming in for Rhyme. Uh, on this kind of like holiday-ish weekend. Uh, and I had a lot of fun playing and I hope you guys are having fun on a pirate booty adventure. R. R and D. It's our duty to recover that booty.